Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at the Resolve light effects. And I'm going to show you in just a few minutes how to create really convincing light looks. And we're going to look at some tracking technique as well. So let's go and have a look. So here's the shot we're going to work with. I'm just going to play it through so you see there's a slight camera move on it as well. So that's going to be quite interesting when we add some effects later. And I've done three nodes here just to give it a grade. So let me enable that and you can see there that I've changed it basically to give it a kind of golden hour look. So golden hour is just before the sun has set, but it's a little bit lower in the sky. And golden hour is a great time to get sort of lens flares and be creative with the, some of the lighting effects. So I'm just going to add another node and now we can start adding our effects. So let's go to our open effects and if you scroll down you'll see one called resolve effects light and in here we've got various things glows and lens flares and that sort of thing. And I'm going to take this aperture diffraction effect drop it on to our node and you see what it does is it exaggerates the highlights so the effect is composited onto the highlight areas of the image. So this is good for moving shots because it naturally tracks the highlights so we don't have to do any tracking or anything it looks natural. Now it looks a little bit unnatural at the minute because obviously the effect is quite strong. So let's just go in here and have a look at what we can do. Um, let's take the blade curvature down a little bit so it's a bit softer effect. And I want to bring the brightness right down on that. So it looks like we're just getting the sun hitting off the rims of the wheels. And let's just switch that on and off. And obviously have a look at it on the move. A little bit more down I think, just a tiny bit. Okay, so that's good. So I'm happy with that. Let's add another node. And we're going to add a lens flare now. So I'm just going to drag and drop that on. And we can reposition that really easy by just grabbing in the viewer and just position it where you want. And you need to make sure that you're in this mode here in order to do that movement. So just check that you're not in any of the others. So you need to be in open effects overlay to use the viewer to position. And I can change the size of it as well quite easily there. And uh, what we need to do is play this clip back now. So let's just press play. And you see because the camera moves, the lens flare looks a little bit weird because it should be reflecting off the lens. So we need to add some tracking to this. Now the tracker is default to window at the minute. If I just pull down here, we can go to the effects tracker. And what that does is takes the tracking points that we're about to do and applies it to the open effect that you have on that current node. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm at the beginning of the shot and I want to track. Now you need to add a tracking point manually. So I'm going to click here. You see this blue square arrives in the middle. You can add as many of these tracking points as you want. And I need to just find a point of sort of contrast. And we're going to track forward. And just before I do that, I only want pan and tilt. So I'm going to take off zoom, rotate and perspective 3D. I don't want them included in the track. And I just press track forward and Nice easy track there and that's done. That's already now applied that tracking information to our lens flare. So let's just play that back and you can see and there it goes. So we just need to modify the lens flare now. It doesn't look great at the moment. So if we come into the settings you see we've got elements here so we can actually choose which part of the lens flare we want to work with. So full screen glare. If we have a look at the brightness of that we can actually adjust that and in fact I don't want it quite as glary as it is at the minute. And I'm also going to have a look at well, you, each of these you can go on to. So you can have flare spot. That's the intensity of that. You can go to the starburst itself and change that and all the settings and the angles and all that sort of thing. You can go to each of the elements. So if you've got on here the ghosting to see which one's which, I just grab the positioning. So that's that flare. If we go to ghost two. That is, oh, it's that little tiny dot there. And if we go to Ghost 3, is the purple diffraction that we're getting. Where's that gone? Yeah, there it is. It's just like a little orb. And Ghost 4 is it's the main big flare there. So you can just play with each of these individuals. Just change the size on that a little bit. But what I actually want to do is remove this completely. And it's quite an easy way of doing that. What I can do is go to my window tool here. And I'm going to literally draw a power window around it. So let's just do that. And obviously it's including everything inside. So we need to invert that. And now it's everything outside of the power window. And we also just need to track this power window. So we're at the beginning at the moment. Let's go back to our tracker. We're currently on the effects tracker. So I need to knock that back to be the window tracker. Let's put all our elements back on. Hit track. Add some softness to the window. 
and that's done. So we've got a nice little flare going on here. We've got our aperture diffraction going on on node four. If you want to have a look at it without this window overlay on there, we can just get rid of that by clicking down here. And let's just play that back. I might just make that a little bit less. So let's just go down here and go to global blend just to make it subtle and we're done. So before and after, and here it is without the lens flares on. And there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. Play around with those parameters, get used to what those parameters do because it really will affect how good that light effect's gonna look. Combine that with tracking and power windows and you're gonna get some really good looks really quick. Um, this episode came about because someone requested it in the comments. So I am looking at the comments. I love hearing your feedback. I'm getting some really nice feedback. So thank you for that. Let me know what you want in future episodes and I'll try my best to deliver that. Have a look at my Facebook page, which is Killer Tips DaVinci Resolve, full of useful tips in there. Uh, hit the notifications and the subscriptions, whichever way around that is. And look after yourself and I'll see you in the next episode.